the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hey there, welcome to QuickBooks 2021. My name is Cindy. We're actually walking through module one right now and we're on video number four. I wanted to talk to you real quick about some of the new features that are in the QuickBooks Desktop 2021 this year. I think you'll be a little bit surprised at the way things work now with the new subscription model. Let's flip over to QuickBooks and let's look at some of these new features. The first thing I wanna talk about are the enhancements they've made to the bank feed option. This is probably the best thing they've done with this new version of QuickBooks. Let's head on up to banking on the menu. I'm going to bank feeds and then to the bank feed center. Now, if you wanna turn on this new look called advanced bank feeds, then you could go to preferences, but for now I wanna skip and show you what it used to look like. This is the old bank feed center. All of your bank accounts or credit cards that you have already linked to your bank would show up on the left. You would click on the one you wanna work with. If there were any transactions waiting to be added to QuickBooks, then you would actually go over to this transaction list and then pull them into this window right here. You'll notice this had an older look to it. It doesn't look very streamlined. There were a lot of problems with the bank feeds. For example, it didn't always pull everything in, so you would end up manually having to type some things in. You also would need to go down the list, check off the transaction you wanted to work with, and then you would go across and fill in any of the information. And once you've gotten that done, then you can come over to the action column and you can quick add, and this would throw it over in the checking register. Now I'm gonna close this, and I wanna show you what the advanced bank feed looks like. I'm going back to banking, and back to bank feeds, bank feed center. Now this time, I'm going to go to the preferences and turn on the advanced mode. You wanna make sure you're under checking on the left and then click on the company preferences tab. And down at the bottom, this is where you see the advanced mode. The express was the one that we saw a few moments ago. And you can see the advanced mode is new in the QuickBooks 2021. Now I'm gonna click okay and it has to close all of the windows to make this change, that's okay. Now when you get here, let's go back to banking, back to bank feeds and the bank feed center and if you get this message again, you don't wanna click learn more because we just did that and just changed the preference. So let's go ahead and skip, and this should show us the new look, and there it is. If you're familiar with QuickBooks Online, this looks very similar to the way the bank feed option is set up over there. You'll see all the accounts you have linked to your bank. You click on the one you'd like to work with, and you'll see all those transactions down below. You'll notice there are four tabs. The first one is recognized. These would be any transactions that it recognized all of the information, like it recognized the payee, it knows which account to put it to. But if it doesn't know that, it might know some of that information and that's what partially recognized is. But most of them probably fall under the unrecognized. What you wanna do is go down the list, click on the transaction you wanna work with, and go across and fill in all the information. And once you've done that, you can click add over on the right here. If you want to go ahead and check off several and make sure all the information is correct, you can add these as a batch down at the bottom here. You'll see that you can add or confirm. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you real quick is the rules up here at the top. If you had any rules already set up, you would see them listed down here. You can also add your own rule. Now what a rule would mean is, what if every time it saw a transaction where the payee was Verizon, for example, it would know to automatically put that in the chart of accounts to your telephone category. That could be a rule that you'd already set up. You can manually set up rules now as well. You can click over on add a rule. You can give your rule a name. And then you can make that rule for money that comes into the account or money that goes out of the account. But you could say anytime it meets any of these conditions or all these conditions, meaning what if anytime it saw a description and in the description it had the word Verizon, then it would know to make the payee say Verizon and to put it in the account called telephone 
And if you're using a specific class, you can put it to that class. And then every time it saw Verizon, then everything would pre-populate. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And that's a quick overview of the new Bank Feed Center. It's very streamlined now, so I think you'll find it a lot easier to use. I'm going to pull up the home screen again. And then let's talk about this next feature, which is called Receipt Management. Now let me explain how this works. There is an app you can download on your phone. It's available for Android or iPhone, and it's actually called QuickBooks Desktop. Now don't download just the QuickBooks app. You want specifically QuickBooks Desktop. And what this app allows you to do is if you're out in the field, you can actually take a receipt that you have and scan it in, and then you can come into your QuickBooks Desktop and actually pull that receipt in. Now, a couple things that are really, really important because it won't work if you don't set this up correctly. The first thing is your users. If you go up to company and then go to set up users and passwords, you want to go to set up users. If you're just using the admin, this is not going to work. You have to actually have an actual user with an email address. And that way, that person has to log into their Intuit account. And you're going to have to be logged into your Intuit account on your phone as well. If you're not logged in with the same email address and the same account on both the desktop and the mobile phone, this will not work. Trust me, I know it took me hours to figure that out. The other thing is, if you happen to be doing books for different clients and you want to use this feature, you can only have one email address attached to one file. Just know that. That means you'll have to be able to set up some additional email addresses to use when you have other clients that you want to do the same thing with. You want to make sure also that that user is logged on. Even if you've set up the user, if it's still logged in as admin, it's not going to see an exact match to the user and the email address. So that's really super, super important there. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let me show you how this works. You're going to get to the Receipt Management feature by going to Vendors on the menu, and then you'll see Receipt Management. Now, sometimes this takes a minute to pull up, so be a little bit patient with it. But when it comes up, you're going to see any receipts you've already scanned in. You can see one right here that I did earlier just to make sure we had something in here. You can also have receipts that maybe are files on your computer and you want to upload them. You could just click right here. Now here's the idea. When you do have a receipt in here, notice that it reads a lot of the information really well. It said this was a receipt from CVS Pharmacy. It has the bank card. Didn't pull in the date. We can go ahead and change that. It's got the amount and it says no matches found. Now let me tell you what this means. If you want to actually pull this over into the register, then you can actually come over here where it says select and you can review this transaction. The first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't recognize the last four digits of my card. I'm going to have to tell it which account that I want to apply this to. And in this case, it was just my debit card, so I'll use checking. It did pull in the date. It pulled in the amount correctly. If I'm using the class feature, I'd want to pick the correct class. Notice it pulled in CVS Pharmacy. If I needed it to apply to a particular job, then I can choose my customer and job from the list. It also doesn't know which account, so I'm going to have to pick an account here. I'm just going to pick Office Supplies. And let's see if we can find it in the list here. And there it is right there. So you see that you have the ability to fill this out. And if it was a check, you could put the check number and a memo here. Now what's going to happen is you're either going to save and add it to the register or rematch. And what rematch means is you have the ability, if you've already matched this to a transaction, you can come in here and you can unmatch it and then rematch it again. I'm going to save and add to the register. And if it says your vendor's not found like this, you can go ahead and create the vendor from here. And that's what this is going to do. And now it says the transaction's been added to the register. I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to go out to the register and check it out. I want to head over to Home. I want to head to the Chart of Accounts. I'm going to look in my checking account. I'll just double click so we can look at the register. So we're going to go ahead and go to because we're looking at transactions that are in 2025 for the practice exercise. Let's say the payee is CVS and we're going to click next and see if we can find it here. 
And if you notice, there it is right up here, CVS Pharmacy, $11.63. Now that you know how the receipt management works, let's talk about how the receipts actually get from your phone into the receipt management. I'm going to go ahead and cancel here and I'll get out of this. And let's go back to the receipt management. I'm going back to vendors and receipt management. I'm gonna go ahead and pull over a screenshot of my phone so that you can see how this works. So there's my pups, Bubs and Sunny. Here's how this is going to work. On your phone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download an app. And the name of that app is QuickBooks Desktop. You can see it right there at the top. You don't want the QuickBooks app. It's specifically called QuickBooks Desktop. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna go ahead and install this and then you're gonna open it up when you're ready to actually scan a receipt. Now I've got one right here that I'm gonna scan and what you'll wanna do is click on Receipt Snap. So what it will do is as soon as I click on it, and I'll go down and say snap receipt. And I've got this receipt and as soon as it sees it and thinks it has all the information, you'll hear it beep. So you saw that just a moment ago. Now what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and I'm going to either upload it if I'd already scanned it and it was already in my computer as a file, or if you've actually taken that scan with your phone, you're gonna have to wait a little bit for it to show up in this window. It might show up pretty quickly, but it could take up to 15 or 20 minutes. So just know that when you're actually scanning in those receipts. Well, let's go ahead and stop the video right here. I do have one more thing I wanna to talk to you about that's new in the 2021 version, but let's hop on over to the next video and I'll talk to you about it there. You can now actually send automatic statements or invoice reminders to customers. What you're gonna do is go up here to customers on your menu, and then you're going to see payment reminders. And here's where you can review and send your payment reminders. You can schedule payment reminders, or you can manage customer groups. Let's go into manage customer groups for a moment. What you want to do is if you've got groups of customers that you want to create a task for, maybe sending out a statement, then you can create a group based on the type of customer, the state they're in, all different kind of options. But let's go ahead and create a customer group. Now you can call the group anything you want. I'll just make it my group for now, but it could be that you call it all residential customers. It could be you call them all South Carolina customers, whatever you'd like to call them. And you can actually give your group a description down here. Now I'm gonna click next. What you wanna do here is go ahead and select the fields and the values to define your group. So what you wanna do is say, all of the customers who have an open balance that maybe is greater than $5, we'll add them. And now we're gonna click next. And here it pulls a list of all the customers that owe you more than $5. Now what you're going to do is if you don't want one of these to be in your group, then you can just uncheck them. If you unselect them, then you have to manually add them again later. So you may not wanna do that unless you absolutely know that you don't want this person in your group. But I'll go ahead and just say no to the message here and then I'll hit finish. Now, when I click OK here, I now have a new group called My Group. Now, you can go over here where it says Actions if you want to delete this group, if you need to edit them, maybe send them all an email. That would be a good idea. If I click on Email, for example, it's going to take me to a blank email. All of these people will get the email, only these people that met my criteria when I actually set up the group. And that's how your groups work. Now, that's important because when you go into some of these other features, you're gonna be able to pick this group because you already have them set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. Now let's say I go back to my customers and I go to payment reminders. And let's say that I go to schedule payment reminders. I'm gonna go ahead and click let's get started. Now if I want, I can pick my group that I created here 
to add a reminder to. Now here's where I add the reminder, and this is a feature you've always had is the reminders here, but you can say that you want to send a reminder 10 days after the due date. And then here's your generic email that's gonna go out. It's going to have dear customer first and last name, and you can see the rest of this right here. If you wanna change any of this, maybe you wanna take out the telephone number, you wanna add something else, go ahead and add that here, and then click OK. Now, if you want to edit the customer group, you can also do it from here. It will say, are you sure you want to edit the group? And then you can go in, and if you want to change the group name, you can do that. If you wanted to go ahead and put a description, you could, and then you could go next, and we talked earlier about all of this, so you can go ahead and edit that group right from here. You don't have to get out of that window and do it somewhere else. I'll go ahead and cancel that, but I just wanted to show you how to set that up. If you have the group set up first, then you can come into the payment reminders and set up a payment reminder for that group. I'm gonna go ahead and save that at the bottom, and that's all there is. If you want to learn more about some of these, you could go in and click on some of these and learn more. But I'm gonna close that for now, and that is the third option that's new. There were a couple of other little minor things that they've done, but these are kind of the big things right now that I want to address. So hopefully that'll help you out a little bit in telling you what some of the new features are in the QuickBooks 2021. Now that you know the new features in the PC version, let's head on over to the next video and talk briefly about some of the new features in the Mac version of QuickBooks.